the monster of the oceans, the attraction of the media, feared everywhere, malicious, aggressive, dangerous, man-eating, simply evil, the killer shark. 88 attacks on human beings in recent years, five ended deadly. Surfers fear for their lives, swimmers hold their breath, divers arm themselves with harpoons. Fishermen need a bigger boat. A creature out of a nightmare, but it's real, and it swims million-fold through our waters, the unpredictable beast from the depths of the ocean. The battle between men and sharks is at its highest, a fight for power. Does a victory mean sovereignty over nature? The shark, the strong king of the world's sea. Is he the hunter or the hunted one? The myth of the shark. They are assumed to be dangerous, murderous. They are considered the killers of our oceans. The fear of sharks that people have is surely based on the image that the media create of the animal. But that image is wrong. Sharks are not dangerous. It is the situations we humans create that can become dangerous. But the shark itself is not dangerous. The statements of shark researcher and expert Dr. Eric Ritter sound unbelievable even fantastic, as if they were just a fantasy. The big problem we have when it comes to sharks and humans being afraid of them is that they project their basic fears onto the shark. They come out of the dark, they come from below, they could eat us alive. So in order for us to resolve this problem, we have to combat the most basic and primal fears of humanity. The expert has made it his life task to free us from the fear of sharks. If these suggestions are wrong, what other myths do we still believe in? We often hear that sharks have small-sized brains, and that is the reason why they are dumb. But the reality is that sharks are not stupid at all. On the contrary, they are rather intelligent animals. Their learning speed is comparable to that of lab rats, and lab rats learn very fast. If we take a look at the size of a shark's brain and compare its total volume and weight to its body weight, we notice that the proportions are comparable to that of mammals. So we really have to get rid of the idea that sharks are stupid. The denial of the intelligence of sharks in recent decades has served the image of a monster that the media have created. But do we really have to be afraid of getting eaten by a shark? People keep saying sharks eat humans simply because there have been human legs found inside shark stomachs. But we must remember, only very big shark species are even capable of eating a human being. What we often see when we find an arm, a hand, or a foot, is that they belong to people that died before the shark bit it off. When someone dies, their body stays warm for a while. And that's the reason why a shark could get curious and bite it. And if we recognize how big some of the animals are, 
it becomes understandable that an arm or a hand can be swallowed without a shark even wanting it. Because of that, one of the biggest myths about sharks is that they can smell human blood underwater for miles. Sharks have no interest in human flesh. For them, it's untasty, like a meal that we don't like is for us. I have been studying the relationship and interaction between sharks and humans for years, and I want to know which signals that we send have an influence on the encounter. In the last 20 years, Dr. Eric Ritter has already banned a lot of superstition about this unique animal out of our minds. But there are still several myths that have to be exposed. Mysterious, mystic creatures out of the depths of the ocean. Lurking, they wait in the half shade until they have the opportunity to finally engulf a whole human being all at once. It's commonly assumed that human blood attracts sharks. If that was possible, I would go to the blood bank before every dive workshop. You could bleed however much you wanted, as often as you wanted, and as long as you wanted, it wouldn't attract sharks. Why should it? Sharks haven't experienced our evolution. Human blood is nothing familiar to them. It causes no reaction from within their senses to get them in a rage or even make them happy. So sharks cannot be lured by human blood. Have they a favor for yellow diving fins or bright orange life jackets instead? And what about surfers? Don't sharks confuse them with seals? Sharks are lured with food they already know. If a shark prefers a certain species, then it would, of course, also like the blood and tissue that smells like that species. Just like us, sharks develop preferences and dislike some foods, but are attracted by others they find tasty. Most of the things we believe are surely wrong. One of the most popular theories is that a white shark confuses an eared seal with a surfer. We hear that over and over, but it's wrong, of course. We have been able to prove that. The reason why white sharks bite surfers is most often because the white shark doesn't know what a surfer is. So the shark is engaging in a taste bite to determine what we are. In that example, we see our assumption. Our idea is completely incorrect. This taste bite only happens when the other senses of the shark aren't enough to identify the object. Since the taste buds of the shark are in its mouth, it has to bite to taste. The overall fear for a shark attack is superfluous. If we consider that there's a maximum number of five deadly shark attacks in one year in the whole world, That means that the probability of being involved in a shark attack and to die from it is lower than the chance to win at the lottery. The chance to die in a car accident is real, but not to get eaten by a shark. Another myth is that sharks are always hungry and constantly hunting. This is simply false. Unlike we humans, sharks only eat when they're hungry. Talking about sharks, we mostly come up with pictures of the white shark, 
But there are very peculiar examples of these animals, like the hammerhead shark, the ray, or the whale shark. These underwater hulks can weigh several tons and therefore need a lot of nutrition. Many shark species can only be differentiated by details. The size of a tiger shark is almost similar to the size of a white shark. But if we take a closer look, we recognize the typical structures on its skin that remind us of a tiger. The whale shark is a real giant, with a length up to 12 meters and a weight up to 12 tons. It doesn't eat fish, but it glides through the waters of our Earth, looking for plankton. The reef sharks can be distinguished by subtle differences. Not only the most common, that there is a black tip and a white tip reef shark, and also a gray reef shark, but they also differ in size, depending upon where on the Earth they live. The hammerhead shark is a very extraordinary animal out of the family of sharks. His very characteristic head allows it to be recognized from far away. There are about 500 subspecies in the shark family. Each of them is important to our ecosystem. Thus, this animal is not only beautiful for divers and underwater photographers, but is also an important link in our nature. One thing is certain. In every sea of our Earth, there are sharks that glide majestically through the water to keep the balance in our ocean. And that is for a reason. Now we want to focus on the smaller sharks. Here you can see the reef shark. The reef shark is one of the most popular personalities underwater. It is the one you will most frequently meet while diving. The peculiarity about the black tip reef shark is surely that he looks totally cuddly. And as his name tells us, it is of course an animal that is at home in the reef. That means that it isn't accustomed to being surrounded by structures. Labeled by his conspicuous black, white, or gray fin tips, and a second really small black fin, which is situated behind the first one. You can find the reef shark at almost any dive spot. The small reef sharks are a magnet for shark enthusiasts because it's one of the easiest sharks to find and dive with. The Galapagos Reef Shark lives in groups in very shallow water. The Galapagos Sharks belong to a rather big species of their class and are known for their striking curiosity. Galapagos Reef Sharks are not likely to travel a lot. On the contrary, they usually stay in one place. The beauty of the reef shark is that they're not as shy as much bigger sharks. Diving with a reef shark, you'll notice they are curious animals, and an interaction is not a rare event.
Every animal on our Earth naturally has a function, and the smaller sharks are in the shadow of more popular sharks, but they have just as many functions as a great predator. Sharks are the predators of the ocean. They control the population of fish in the reef, but also at the sandy ground without vegetation. The sand shark. This individual with a very cheeky, impish grin, armed with sharp teeth, is one of the medium-sized sharks. As we see here, the sand shark is often escorted by his companions, the cleaner wrasses, that not only keep its gills clean, but also eat the rest of the shark's food. The sand shark is able to retain heat, and therefore is not as dependent on the temperature of his surroundings like other fish, which is the reason why they can be found in the Mediterranean as well as the Indian and Pacific Oceans. They mostly reside in the shallow waters near sandy ground. Their characteristic color fades with time. This shark can swallow air and thus use his stomach filled with air as a support while swimming. The sand shark is not only loved by divers, but also by underwater photographers because he appears in the flat waters and therefore isn't covered by reefs. The hammerhead shark, one of the most developed sharks in the depths of the ocean. The typical shape of the head of the hammerhead shark results from the advantage of being able to perceive a 360-degree view. His prominent broad head allows the hammerhead shark to receive impulses of potential prey, even when they hide buried in the sand. The natural enemy of the hammerhead shark are bigger sharks on one side and the great orca on the other side. Hammerhead sharks are very fast animals. With an enormous speed of 25 miles per hour, they cross the water. Unlike other sharks, they're found in deeper situated regions, which is why they are rarely seen on camera. Like many sharks, the hammerhead shark is a loner save some exceptions. Great shark schools with up to 20 parties are often spotted on the coast of Colombia. The hammerhead shark has another oddity that is not commonly known. Research has led to the discovery that bonnethead sharks are vegetarian, which fully contradicts the man-eating machine we imagine thinking of a shark. The great and the bronze hammerhead shark are classified as a strongly endangered species by the IUCN. Found in every world sea are 630 species of the always majestic ray. On the bottom side, the ray has an individual pattern which is used to identify single animals. The special thing about rays is that they're flat. Their different patterns on the top side serve to camouflage and hence differ from one species to another. Like the whale shark, all species except the skate are oviparous.
That means that the young emerge from the eggs inside their mother and are born alive. While the stinger of some species is furnished with venom glands, other species have electric organs on their stingers. They are a group of animals that came up after the sharks did. So they are basically nothing else than flattened sharks. Due to their body shape, they are forced to consume other types of nutrition. Rays are very curious, communicative animals. It has been detected that they develop sympathies and antipathies against divers by eye contact. Despite their long journeys through the open ocean, Rays are declining in numbers. The tiger shark, one of the most feared sharks in the depths of the ocean, and named by the public, bad guy of the sharks that can't even be restricted by the shell of a tortoise. He is one of the most dangerous predator fish in the ocean. The tiger shark has his distinctive name because of the characteristic pattern on his skin, which is situated on his back. The extraordinary thing about the tiger shark is surely that they don't resemble the image we have of them. Tiger sharks rarely stay in one place. They swim over 50 miles a day with a speed of 19 miles per hour and 380 yards below the surface. Another feature of the tiger shark is his spacious stomach with muscular walls that are three times as thick as those of other species. It is generally assumed that he eats everything that he eats cans and traffic signs, everything. But that is a myth. He doesn't eat these things. They are found in their stomachs because of other reasons. The diverse meal plan of the tiger shark is by no means a sign of dumbness, but is quite useful since he would die if he was specialized in a small number of different prey and these went extinct. Very remarkable are the eyes of the tiger shark, which he can turn inside his head and protect with a nictitating membrane from possible defending reactions of his prey. Also, his teeth, that are all nearly similar to one another, are very different from those of other shark species. Thus, they are incisor and sawtooth in one. The tiger shark is indeed not yet one of the endangered species, but he is certainly on the red list of the IUCN. The tiger shark is surely the most underestimated shark species we know. What we see here is the greatest shark as well as the greatest fish in the ocean, the whale shark. The average size of this giant is about 40 feet, and its stunning weight about 12 tons. Whereby the male individuals are smaller than the female. With a life expectancy of 100 years, the fascinating whale shark is one of the longest living animals on our planet. Like the rays, whale sharks can be distinguished by the individual pattern on their half feet thick skin, 
which is comparable to a human fingerprint. The whale shark is a pure filterer. That means he doesn't use his 300 rows of teeth for food intake, but he absorbs tremendous amounts of water with his huge mouth and presses them through his gills. Through special filter organs, little animals and plankton species, like for example krill, are held back. Searching for nutrition, whale sharks cover large distances and are therefore called the restless wanderers of the sea. For snorkelers, groups of whale sharks are easy to reach. The white shark, the greatest predator on our earth. His huge dentition has made him a feared hunter. He can dive about 1,100 yards deep, get a speed of 40 miles per hour, and because of that, he is a terminal link of many food chains. It might sound crazy, but the white shark stands out because of its shyness. The white shark has had very little interaction with humans in his evolution, and as a result of that, it avoids contact with them. Also, there is a personality behind every white shark. Because of this, one shark might be timid and shy, and another one might be more curious and playful. Anyone that has had the opportunity to snorkel beside white sharks will realize that it takes a long time until the animal dare come close. In addition to that, human beings have sparsely nutritious content and as a result are not as interesting as prey. White sharks are not stupid at all. On the contrary, they are much more social and clever than they appear to be. The biggest white shark ever found weighed 3.2 tons and was 21 feet long. Despite being the most protected shark species in the world, it is labeled as endangered by the IUCN. A sea without sharks would change so rapidly that it would not only get lost as a living environment for many animals, but it would also lose its availability for us humans. For our media, the shark will always be a headline. Hopefully, the next headline will not be about its extinction. Among people, we come upon many myths and superstitions about sharks. Mainly on the internet, tales and fake evidence circulates that scares people. The big problem is that we are surrounded by media which has been and still is against sharks. The latest studies have shown that more than 50% of the TV series, newspaper articles, and so on present the shark completely different than how he actually is. The frightening image of the shark already arose in the midst of the last century, with speculations about shark attacks. Shortly after the first rumors, Steven Spielberg's Jaws finally makes the shark a man-eating beast. Since then, Hundreds of movies have been produced, showing sharks as killers. And that lasting image has stayed in our minds. 
Anyone that notices sharks are being represented incorrectly in magazines or on the internet can write letters to the editor or inform the webmasters. Every single person can contribute to the protection of sharks. You don't have to stop a fishing boat to help, but as soon as you notice some false statements, you can report them. Only that helps to eliminate people's misguided vision of sharks. Most people think sharks can smell human blood for miles. But the shark doesn't recognize humans by their blood. This is scientifically proven. As you can clearly see here, the shark attacks a box and not the divers around it. Whereas shiny objects attract other animals like barracudas, the shark is not excited at all by them. Also, sharks don't confuse surfers with seals. Healthy sharks can recognize very precisely if they're in front of a surfer, a seal, or a diving fin. Sharks are not only perfect hunters, they also have a strong influence on the ecosystem in the water. And as soon as any link in this ecosystem is eliminated, whether it is bony fish or something else, it will have consequences that sink all the way to the bottom as well as float to the top of the chain. Not only that, we also add additional impact by overfishing the shark. The change of one animal population influences the others. The shark works as a police in the sea, for it has an extremely important control function. If the shark disappears, some fish populations will increase dramatically and their food sources will die out. The consequence of this is that we often take the basic nutrition from the shark and it is forced to swim to other places, where he might damage the existing ecosystem there. Under and overpopulation trigger perceptible threatening consequences. The complex correlations in the ecosystems are underestimated a lot. It seems like the shark is simply existing, but this fascinating and beautiful creature clearly has a purpose. The decimation of the sharks has already led to the destruction of many living environments, and many others are massively suffering under that condition, so much so that their ecosystems stand on the brink. We still have many regions where the sharks are enough in number. For example, the Bahamas. The Bahamas have a very good policy against shark hunting. Besides, the waters there are rather flat too. That means the waters are warm and as a result harbor a lot of nutrition. There, we still have an intact ecosystem. The Bahamas have declared their territorial waters as shark reservations. The Bahamas are a prime example for their responsible handling of their maritime ecosystem. Some states like Brazil and Ecuador followed the Bahamas on the right path to shark protection. Sharks have a much bigger problem than the bad image they have in the media. They're killed by us by the millions every year, mainly through so-called finning, the cutting off of their fins to make shark fin soup. Shark fin soup is a delicacy in Asiatic countries. 30 years ago when we first started we thought, it's only a small group that kills the sharks this way. 
but we kill about 70 million sharks each year with these methods. The extent of this massacre is indescribable. Sharks are still the most frequent predators above 110 pounds on our planet. If we continue hunting sharks at this rate, they will soon lose the density they need to hold the ecosystems. Of course, if I speak to someone from the Asiatic area that is accustomed to consuming shark fin soup, they will tell me that it is a prestige to offer a friend shark fin soup for dinner, so it has cultural value. But the torture of animals has no cultural value. Unfortunately, we are fighting against a history that has been established for centuries, and that makes it hard to tell people. It's important that you stop doing that. This is more important than establishing your position with colleagues. This tradition is deeply enshrined in some cultures of the East. More than half of all shark fin soups are consumed solely in Hong Kong, where the biggest shark fin raiding takes place. Besides finning, there is also the regular bycatch, especially when nets are used. Sharks swim into them. If fishers are looking for other animals, they logically don't want sharks. The sharks die and are simply thrown back into the water. If the shark survives, he's lucky. If not, no one cares. Sharks are simply thrown away. For example, through finning we discard 90 to 95 percent of the shark, although the meat of the shark is still useful. If we hunt sharks, we should at least use it completely and not only cut away the fins and throw the rest back in the water, where the animal often most miserably dies. Paralyzed, the shark drowns to the ground and suffocates, or gets eaten by other sharks. The main part of studying the interaction of men and sharks is of course humans themselves. So I want to know how a person gets nervous, why they get nervous, and how a person that stays calm makes a difference in the encounter with a shark. The research focuses on the shark on one side and on humans on the other side. So we all have different aspects. As I first started in the 80s to represent sharks as they really are, I felt a lot of resistance, simply because people back then weren't ready to believe. I had to prove that you can play with a shark underwater and not get attacked. Today in a lot of countries, we really are moving in the right direction. Many people now register that sharks are not how the media shows them. In the USA, where I live, we are around 15 years behind. My key experience, actually, was the first shark program I saw when I was seven years old and the speaker said something I didn't see in the animals. That triggered a little unrest in me and when I was 10 years old I read Dr. Doolittle and I was convinced it is possible to speak to animals. At the age of 12, I told my mom I wanted to be a shark doctor, so I pretty much dedicated my life to sharks. My first interaction with a shark was very special to me. I had built a vision of the animals through the years how I wished the sharks to be. My idea of how sharks are was certainly absolutely opposed to what was shown in the mass media. So I was excited to see, am I right or am I wrong? Out of the fears that impede us to be friends with the sharks, emerge barriers and blockades. Eric Ritter manages with his workshops at the Shark School to give us the courage to overcome them. He who lives his passion for sharks for a long time inspires and motivates thousands of people with his lovely and respectful handling of the sharks. So, 
Since the Shark School has been founded, we have a platform where everyone, no matter if they are a surfer, a swimmer, a snorkeler, or a diver, everyone can take part in it. The researchers on one side, the workshops on the other side, and they all learn how to handle sharks, how to communicate with them, and it's an ideal platform for people who are afraid of sharks. The interaction between the shark and the humans can give rise to many positive feelings, especially for people that have had bad experiences with sharks or have only heard of bad incidences with sharks involved. The workshops are a chance for them to internalize a correct image of this animal. A workshop at our shark school usually goes six or seven days. One of my opening questions is the following. Who is afraid of sharks? Almost everyone nods and comes forward. I always respond saying that in 48 hours they will be excited to finally go into the water with the animals and everybody laughs. But it's true. Diving in areas with a lot of sharks is the first and most difficult step for the participants of the workshop. But those who have the courage to do it win precious experiences and the shark gains their sympathy. The participants rapidly build up a personal bond with the sharks and even enjoy their presence. We should not forget that the fear of sharks is trained, not inborn. And if you can learn a fear, you can unlearn it too. The best way is simply taking people by the hand and they'll notice, wow, I haven't been eaten. And then my job is done. The sharks are actually able to choose a favorite diver by eye contact and show themselves curious and playful after a while. Diving with sharks is initially unimaginable. Nobody would volunteer to swim close to a very superior enemy. But as soon as the fear is overcome, very different questions arise. From time to time, we set scenarios in mind. If I wear a yellow or white diving fins, it bothers the shark, and the shark will bite. But that's not true, of course. We always have to question such suggestions. In earlier days, for example, yellow life jackets were used until someone said, yum yum yellow and suddenly people thought the yellow color attracts sharks. For this reason, orange life jackets were created which are supposed to repel sharks. In both cases, we have to ask ourselves, what effect does yellow have on sharks? Why would it be interesting for them? A shark would be interested in yellow things if there was a big yellow fish that he likes to eat. But there are no such fish. If orange repels a shark, are there any orange fish that is a natural enemy of the shark? No, there are not. We always have to question what color means to the shark and what influence it has. It is possible to dive with sharks without danger, as long as you adhere to some rules of behavior. Loud noises, for example, could animate the shark to bite out of curiosity. It is extremely important to understand the sharks, because it is not their intention to act badly. Accidents with sharks involved leading to injuries are a consequence of wrong behavior that happens mostly because people don't understand the shark. A few years ago, we started doing experiments with eye contact. That means the person watches the shark in the eyes and the other way around. What happens if we now turn away or look away? Does something happen or not? We have found that a constant look in the eyes of the shark is the best way to assure it will not approach. Sharks are not dangerous, but we can make a situation with a shark a dangerous one.
It is my job to constantly create and investigate new situations that reach a certain physical and mental limit. I still remember and often mention our first freediving experiments with white sharks in South Africa, where we had very poor visibility. The moment a shark suddenly appears beside you is intense. I primarily work alone on my studies. We also tested how sharks approach humans when it's dark. We swim and dive without oxygen bottles or lamps. We just hold our breath and wait until the sharks come closer. First, you can feel the sharks, but you can barely see them. These are situations that you don't want to experience every day by yourself, but it's necessary for us to create some basic knowledge on which we can base our experiments later on. Even experts cannot come off completely of their fear of the unexpected. But the more time you spend studying the animals, the more you understand them, the more interest and fascination arise in yourself. The shark. The hunter or the hunted one? After spending some time studying these animals, it becomes clear that their image in the media is only a deformed shadow of what they really are. My colleagues that have been diving for a few years remember the Red Sea. They remember how many sharks we saw, and when we return to the same region today, we see that the area is dead. Fish and sharks are gone. There are a lot of places where the sharks are gone, and if sharks disappear in a place, they're gone for good. And they won't reappear just because we stop hunting them. Sharks have a generation time of 15 to 20 years. Greenland sharks take longer at 150 years. That's tremendous. So even if we would start a moratorium, we wouldn't see any change for the next 10 to 15 years. The dramatic shark murdering is comparable to the uprooting of the rainforest. The speed with which the kings of the ocean are killed is incredibly rapid. We have various maritime regions where sharks have been extremely decimated and almost completely wiped out. I mean, most people wouldn't believe the Mediterranean was once an ocean with numerous sharks. The few remaining sharks in the Red Sea will soon be gone too. In 20 or 30 years, sharks in the North Atlantic will be eliminated. There are regions where we sadly have to admit that it's over. My biggest concern has always been that I think, if people could only see sharks through my eyes for just one minute, we could still save them. That's true. We have to free ourselves from our superstitious beliefs about sharks, and instead people have to start trusting in people like me who spend most of my time with these animals. And the moment you understand that, you will realize that sharks are not dangerous animals. You can be with them underwater, you can have fun with them, and by doing that, you learn that what is done to them by the media is not justified at all because there is no such monster. It is possible, it is necessary, that entire nations and every single person gets active and stands up against the extinction of the sharks, and with that, against the destruction of entire ecosystems. <laughs>